what is employee engagement. And uh, to me, employee engagement is when employees care enough about the company that they put forward new ideas. They really care about the company's success and uh, wanting it to improve and how you realize that they're caring is they're coming up with new ideas. Hey boss, I've got an idea to do this. I think we can lower costs by doing this. I think we can sell more by doing this. That type of thing. Uh, then the next thing about it though is that, um, and often the hardest part, is actually implementing those ideas. So employees that are really engaged uh, look forward to implementing, getting the job done as well. And then finally, uh, employee engagement is uh, employees being interested enough to track how their ideas are affecting the business. So if I came up with a new idea and it reduced costs, then uh, if I'm an engaged employee, uh, it interests the heck out of me uh, how much cost it saves, how, how it's helping the company and, how, and my peers around me. And that just feels good. And when it feels good, we want to do that again and again. So that is uh, my definition, definition of engagement. So the second question was how can employee engagement reduce costs. When employees are engaged, uh, they drive costs down in unimaginable ways. Uh, it, it always just amazes me that the, the ideas and creativity that comes out of the people that uh, uh, I and our other firm members um, see when we work with clients. And for example, just using a shorter or longer screwdriver can save hundreds of hours on uh, assembling a piece of equipment. Um, similarly, uh, it can be much larger. We've had clients that uh, just by altering the way they make something, so they're altering their process for making something, uh, save millions of dollars per year. Uh, there's one firm that saved $20 million per year just by changing saw blades uh, at a steel pipe cutting, steel pipe manufacturing mill, uh, saw blades that actually cut the pipe into different lengths, just by replacing those in a different way and at different frequency, uh, reduced downtime and saved $20 million. And these are costs that uh, don't have any capital costs or, or expenses attached to them. This is just people behaving in a different manner to uh, reduce costs. And that $20 million cost saving is forever, and it just gets better after that. It, uh, people um, add on cost reduction and, um, ideas to that. So your $20 million just doesn't come and then goes away. It's a permanent, sustainable cost reduction. That's one way that employees can reduce costs. Um, the, the other thing is uh, when that happens, when, when a team comes up with a $20 million a year cost saving, uh, that's huge. They get, they actually have a, they, they're, they're proud. They have a, a slight, cockiness to themselves at that point in a good way. And in other words, hey, you know, we're, we're the man, we're the woman. We uh, were able to uh, uh, just sit down and think about this and we saved the company a lot of money. And um, the more ideas that come out like that, uh, the more infectious it becomes because greater savings create greater engagement and excitement, which creates more ideas and it becomes a circular pattern. Uh, it just feels so darn good that you want to come in the next day and do it again. And so that's uh, employee engagement and involvement.
And in our work, that's an important thing. Engagement is also about people wanting to come to work, enjoying their job, and they're doing it not just because they're getting more salary. For example, in the case of the uh, team that came up with the $20 million cost saving, they didn't get any more money. They were actually a unionized uh, organization. So their salaries or wages were uh, already calculated. Um, but, you know, that's, that's nice. It's nice to get a wage and everything like that. But it, be, it can become monotonous and boring over time. And so when you're actively involved in helping the company get ahead and you can put your hat on some of these ideas, again, that just feels good. So that's how it reduces costs in companies. And it can happen in many, many different ways. But the primary thing is that um, uh, the ideas create the cost savings which makes people feel good, which makes them go and get more ideas. Okay, so the third question is, how is it done effectively? We talked about how to reduce it, and uh, you know, that actually sounds kind of an easy problem. It's simple to do, but um, it's not easy to uh, accomplish. It's not easy to carry out. And I think the reason for that is a number of leaders, when they rise up the ranks, they often think that they are the ones that need to come up with the ideas. They are the ones that need to tell uh, folks below them how to do their job. When actually what happens is they get further away from the process. They're, they're doing, they're, their scope of work changes, uh, broadens perhaps to other things. And they get away from the production line. They get away from the front line where the uh, actual work is being done. And uh, when, when leaders start doing that, uh, their employees will shut down. They, they will become disengaged. Their employees will become disengaged. And the way around that, how you make sure that doesn't happen, is you do just the opposite. So actually, uh, all leaders need to do is uh, frame the goals or the, the tasks or the criteria that the employees need to work within. So Mr. and Mrs. Employee, uh, the company needs this to happen. You have these resources and you have this much time. Uh, tell me some ideas on how you can accomplish that and uh, I'll provide you the resources and the backup to get it done. Uh, and once leaders start doing that, then they're really allowing frontline people to uh, take ownership of that process. Now, when frontline people start to come up with ideas, the next most important thing that leaders need to learn and to do is to keep their, make sure their employees are safe. And what I mean by that is that they always have to recognize an idea. No idea is a bad idea. No idea is a stupid idea. Uh, employees must feel um, that they aren't going to be put down or made to look stupid by their leader because they come up with some type of idea. Uh, as they get more and more used to putting forward these ideas and articulating them um, in a way that um, talks about how it benefits the company, then there can be a more healthy pushback between ideas between leaders and managers because there's a trust level that's built up about these things. And by articulating it, I mean employees just can't say, I feel or I, I think that this is good so we should do it. They should say something like, very specific, uh, I believe if we spend $10 on a shorter screwdriver, 
that it will allow me to do this task 5% quicker, which will result in a $20 saving, which will pay back the screwdriver in one day. So that makes total sense. Who wouldn't want to do it? Uh, and so leaders have to coach their frontline folks to speak in that manner, to, to, um, to put costs in it. So you get away from I feel, you feel arguments. There's just a factual base to it. And there might be some risks as you get into, well, there's always risks as you get into bigger projects but you can talk about how to mitigate those risks. Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Having those conversations are great. Uh, so once an employee feels safe and they're building, their, uh, building up that relationship, the ultimate goal uh, for the leader to make sure all of this happens effectively is really to build confidence in their team and the people that are reporting to them. Because when people are confident and they know that they can articulate their idea in a, in a safe uh, manner, in a, in a safe climate, that they won't get hurt, uh, that uh, brings huge results to organizations. Again, it becomes infectious. Uh, when this confidence builds up in people, they can push back effectively, present their arguments better, and that um, just explodes. Ideas explode, uh, the cost savings, um, the, the number of cost savings increase dramatically, reducing total overall costs and ultimately profitability. And so that's the main thing, but that's that's still not enough. So what you also need to do is record those ideas. And uh, they can be done simply on a, an action, what I call an action item list, which is a three-column spreadsheet or three columns on a piece of paper that says who does what by when. So if I fill, say I'm going to uh, buy the shortened screwdriver this, and the when is this week, and then we review it at the end of the end of the week, and uh, I've done it. Then, then that's great. If I haven't done it, then there usually is a reason why, and so we would would discuss that. Nobody gets beat up if they don't do it. But um, in our experience, uh, uh, when we work with clients to uh, help them track ideas. It's rare that somebody doesn't come up with an action item and, or doesn't complete their action uh, during this tracking phase because no one likes to come in front of a meeting and go, oh, I didn't do it. It's letting down your peers. So even if you do it at the last minute, you're up till midnight shortening a screwdriver. It usually gets done. Uh, so just having that on paper and having a regular tracking system is defi definitely a must. And then, of course, you have to have weekly reviews of that tracking system, like I stated. And that can be anywhere from uh, daily on a drilling rig where there's 24-hour uh, work going on and stuff needs to be done in the next 12-hour shift to weekly, to monthly, uh, and to quarterly, whatever works for the company. And finally, you need to be able to track how these ideas and the actions around these ideas are affecting the company. So employees need to know that um, if they come up with an idea, how much cost it really did save. Because when it saves costs, again, it goes back to feeling good and it creates this cycle where people want to do more of it. Um, but also, it helps us learn that maybe what we're doing isn't getting the results that we want. And that's OK, too, because at least we know that um, we, and that's OK, too, because at least we know that uh, that idea isn't something we should do. So we can cross that off our list. And if we know that and our competitors don't, then we have an advantage over them. So doing those 
three things continuously will uh, increase engagement and lower cost, ultimately increasing profits. And this can be uh, applied anywhere um, in a business. For example, it can be used in a manufacturing environment. It can be used in an engineering environment where people are coming up with new engineering drawings. And also, it can be used throughout the whole supply chain as well. So when people are coming up with ideas, big and small, through all those different supply chain steps, and they're track, um, tracking or capturing them in action item lists and then tracking their effect on the whole supply chain process and the cost, then that can dramatically drive down costs again. And it's a continuous thing. Uh, as they implement one thing, they'll drive down, uh, for example, supply chain management costs as well. So that's about it. Again, it's uh, it, it's not rocket science. It's a, a, a simple concept, but not easy to carry out. Uh, there's a number of factors and leadership techniques that have to be learned to do that. And uh, that's that's um, why I do this type of thing. So I'll tell you a little bit about my background. Um, is I I see. Uh, companies and clients are struggling with these concepts to bring down costs, and it, and it can get frustrating. And so, why I uh, started Renchi Consulting Group was uh, because three things: one, we as a company believe, and I've seen uh, through all our clients, that people just want to get things done. As I said earlier. When people get things done, they come up with an idea, and uh, it, it helps the company. It feels good, and they want to do it again. Uh, the second thing we believe in is that we work with tools, not models. And what I mean by that is we hate models where people uh, say that thou shalt do something the wrenchy way, and once you learn the wrenchy way, you will be the best uh, leader, operator, worker in the world. To us, that's simplistic and nonsensical. Uh, so what we do is take hundreds and hundreds of tools that we have learned over a couple decades of work and through our careers before that and put them together in a matrix. And then these tools can be picked out and used when employees and leaders require them. So it's a much more fluid way of, of uh, improving performance. And it's more sustainable because, and here's the third thing we believe in, that we pull rather than push ideas. So again, we don't come in and say, thou shalt do this. We say, what's going on? What are you seeing? What's stopping you from doing things, and then we would suggest something like, and then we would suggest something like, would you like to look at this tool that might give you uh, some support or an answer to the problem that you're dealing with? So that's why we got into the business, because when we deal with those three things, then people become uh, more productive, they become safer, and there's less stress and they're happy in their jobs, um, which is another great byproduct. So Wrenchy was started a little over eight years ago to do that. That's our philosophy. Hi Justin, sorry I got cut off there, so I'll just continue a little bit more about <clears throat> uh, my background. So that's why we do stuff, um, why, why we do those things. So that's why we do those things and um, why we're in the business. And how we do that is we have 
performance management coaches that uh, go in and work full time with uh, clients. Pretty much about 80% of their time is in the front lines. Again, working with those people that are holding the tools, holding the drawings, holding the CAD programs, that type of thing. And I personally myself uh, come from a construction and a manufacturing background. I uh, had a lot of uh, QA and QC training. Um, and then started and sold a bunch of different companies in metals manufacturing, uh, plastic uh, manufacturing, and creating products that to serve the plumbing and roofing industries. And then uh, just over eight years ago, got into the consulting business and started the Renshi Consulting Group. Um, I have an MBA in global business and an BA or undergraduate degree in economics. I uh, spent some time in China, so know a little bit of Mandarin, and um, live in uh, Calgary, Alberta. That's where our company is headquartered. We have another office in the United States in uh, Toledo, Ohio, and we're expanding uh, throughout Canada and the United States over the next uh, year. That out. If uh, you need anything else, just uh, ping me on Skype or LinkedIn or email, and uh, be happy to uh, provide some more commentary.